Hey, what's up folks? This is building a redistricting application part three, and in this one, we're gonna make a map. So you're gonna need whatever geography you're going to use to make your districts uh, exported to GeoJSON. And you'll wanna put in that uh, GeoJSON file whatever columns you're going to use for redistricting. Like in Mecklenburg County, we use voting precincts to make our districts. And I've just put in a couple of columns here, the precinct number, the district number it's currently assigned to, and the population, which is kind of like a random fudge on what it was in 2010, because the 2020 stuff isn't quite out yet. Now normally I have some other stuff based on what rules the redistricting would be using. Probably some racial demographics, maybe some voting registration information. Uh, but I'm just gonna keep it simple to this. We'll check a couple of things and, and chart one thing, because once you see how you, you do it with one thing, you're, you're gonna be fine. So there's our uh, layer. Now I'm using uh, QGIS here. Uh, so I just go export, save feature as, make sure it's GeoJSON, make sure it's WGS84. GeoJSON is a text format, so Anything extra in it you can throw out will make it smaller. So get rid of any columns you don't need. And you wanna make your coordinate precision the smallest amount that you can, you can stand. Like six decimal places after the decimal point for, for uh, decimal degrees is, is more than fine. What I also like to do is, is use a tool named MapShaper, called MapShaper. It's an online tool, I'll put a link to it. You can drag your Drio JSON there and you can simplify it to the point where, just find the point where it drives you crazy and then just back up one step. And I did that, uh, my GeoJSON file went from 1.7 megabytes to 250 kilobytes, which is much nicer over the wire. So we got our geography. And I put that in, in our source lib folder, I made a data folder and I just put the geography.json there. This one, this voter precinct one is what I had before I used MapShaper with it. So it's much smaller now. All right, let's get started. Let me restart the uh, uh, npm run dev. I don't need two of these windows open. Here's where we left it last time. We've got you know our development environment, our building environment, and our selection control here all up and working. Now in this gray box where we don't have a map, but it says map, we should put a map. So I'm going to grab another uh, terminal window in Visual Studio Code, and I'll go npm install save map libre gl. And I'll run off and grab that and install it. And we are ready to start mapping. Now, I was giving it some thought, and it makes the most sense to me to store the geography in our data store. Because you're gonna need that data in a couple different places. You're gonna need it for the map, and you'll need it when you're doing your checks to see whether certain checks passed or failed. And you're gonna need it for any kind of charts you wanna build from, from the newly minted districts. So let's go ahead and put our geography in here. Go import, let's give it a name, geog from dollar sign, uh, dollar sign lib slash data slash geography dot JSON. And we will make a new, uh, a new shared uh, writable data store, export let, uh, geography equals writable geojson. You head back over to this thing. Save. Oh, geography. Uh, oh, geog. Yes. Yeah, I need I need to remember to save more often so it can yell at me in smaller increments. All right, now we have our geography in our data store. Let's go ahead and make a map. I'm going to go to our lib folder, right click and say new file. I'm going to map.svelte. And this is going to need a div to put our map into. And let's go ahead and style that. 
we'll give it a width 100% and a height of where we want 700 pixels Mecklenburg County is a bit taller than it is uh, a rotunder I don't know width wise it's 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 you know, you know what I'm saying and just to make sure we're not crazy we'll just give it a little background color say cyan world's most annoying blue and now let's add that to our index.svelte so import map from and I just say capital M for map just as a convention it's you don't have you can really call it anything you want there and then let's put that here where we have that word map if you do capitalize it you have to capitalize it there too yeah let's make this a little neater looking while we're at it okay so there's our map component it's a big blue blob right now which is a uh, not all interesting let's make a real map now I figure we are going to need all all the data stores in this one we're going to need to know the district because that's what we're assigning things when we click on the map we'll need to know the colors because that's how we're going to shade the map of course we're going to need the geography so import colors district and geography from uh, dollar sign lib slash store All right, we're also going to want map libre, of course. Import, I usually just call these things GL. Import GL from map libre GL. All right, we're gonna need one more thing. Uh, a thing you'll run into the first time you do something with like Vue or Svelte or, or probably React too, is it has different life cycles or different parts of its life cycle for each component. And when it's first running the script, it hasn't actually made the DOM stuff yet. So if we try to add a map just right here, it will either error out, which is annoying, or randomly error out, which is even more annoying, based on whether or not it has a div to actually put this map in. So what we're going to want, what we want to fix that is we have to get. A part of the life cycle called on mount from Svelte. And on mount will happen when the DOM this is mounted and we won't run into any problems if we stick our map creation stuff in there. Okay. Now I have a couple of uh, uh, templates or like snippets I have in VS Code to speed some things along. These are the map options for 99% of what I do for Mecklenburg County. It's like a map container and a map style and and basically where all the bounding boxes and zooms and stuff that is. So Mecklenburg County is pretty much front and center. So your map options for a different thing will vary. Uh, you'll want to sit in like a, a min zoom this max bounds won't let you get if somebody crazy scrolls they won't go off the side of the earth and lose track of, of, of your area entirely uh, starting zoom and a center point you'll want to modify that for whatever your data is and I also have a a blank map box GL style and it's just going to have nothing in it except for the background layer. We'll change this to red just for a sanity check. Now we'll go to our on mount function, which doesn't need to be passed anything. And we'll go const map equals new gl.map and give it our map options. And if I didn't screw anything up, we should see a a red ah a red thing. Man, look at me just uh, live coding like a maniac. This is rare. Okay, so now we can add our geography layer. So we'll go back to our sources, and we're going to give it a name. 
and I'm just going to name it Geography, which is how I name it all the time, which is probably confusing, but keeps me from getting uh, lost. And it's type of GeoJSON. And the data for that is that store we that store we imported or the yeah the thing we imported from our store so now we've got our data in that map style now we have to add a layer for it give it ID ah, since since this isn't an adjacent file for the style you don't have to put quotes around everything ID of geography it's gonna have a source of geography it's gonna be a type fill We'll need a string around that. And we're going to have to paint it. And we'll go fill color. Let's do the only hex I can ever remember. B A D A A five five, which kind of looks like a badass. Sorry, I can remember it. We'll need quotes around that because there's a dash in it. All right, what we got? Oh, oh, we're on fire. We have, we have. Well, you know, uh, that's. We will want to see the pre, the boundaries in the voting precincts. Fill, uh, outline, color. We'll just give it white. There we go. Now we're talking, we got a map, but we want to shade it in with these colors. Now what that looks like in uh, in the style specification for the, the GLs is you'll turn that string into an object and then you can give it uh, a property you want to use. And our property we had was just called district and we want to give it a type um, you know, there's like linear and, and different things like that. We just want categories here. So I'm going categorical, category, categorical, I think that's it. And then you give it stops. And stops is an array of arrays. And what it's supposed to look like is like, you know, some value of district and then some color. But we want to populate that from our colors thing and that we got from our store. Let's just go const stops equals an array and then we'll go dollar sign. Remember dollar sign is our shorthand for getting to the value from our store. There's also like a, a get function you can use which is quicker to do it this way. Colors for each and we'll go color. And then we'll go stop, stop, push. And each member of that array, we're actually going to want the color and the index of that array, because that's how we're getting our, our these numbers here. We'll go index, comma, color. And we should just be able to change this down here to Stops. Yeah! No. Why? 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 Oh! Index starts at zero. Our district start at one. Hey! Look at that. Look at that. Ah! Oh, are we happy? Are we not entertained? Okay. Look at that. Flat as a pancake. I want to add a pan zoom control to your map too. <laughs> <laughs> but we have colors. Now we need to do two other things with our map. We have two events. We have uh, a hover event where we're going to get information about the thing you're about to click on. So you can decide whether you want to click on it or not. We're going to need a click event, which is going to assign a new district to uh, the voting precinct. So let's go back down here where we made our map. So I there's in Visual Studio Code there's a map box uh, 
There, there's a map box. Uh, what do they call it? Snippet library, where you can get some of this stuff. So this is coming from that. So we're going to want a click event, and we're going to want. Uh, a mouse enter and a mouse leave event. So we'll just stub these in. Uh, so let's do the hover stuff first. Uh, we'll make this, uh, well, we're going to want to pop up to pop up our information in. We'll go uh, const pop up equals new gl dot pop up and give it some features we don't want it to have a close button because i mean it's, it's a hover thing so you'll never be able to reach the close button and we also don't want it to close on click because again it's, it's a hover thing so now we have a pop-up, but it's not added to our map and it doesn't have any coordinates associated with it. So let's go map on mouse enter. Oh, actually not mouse enter because it's a polygon. You get weird stuff on polygons if you go mouse enter. It's okay with points. You want to go mouse move. Say geography. And we'll just, let's just see if we get an alert. Let's make sure we're not crazy. Alert! All right, so this code is working. I like to call this E for event. I, I don't like to call it object, even though it is an object, but I, I think it is an event. You know, fight me. So now we have mouse move. We want to add a pop-up uh, on here. So we'll go pop-up, and we'll do the, the rapadoodle. Uh, Set long lat equals e dot long lat. So it'll have some coordinates. And we'll go set or what is it? Uh, set dot uh, alert center. Uh, brains, go brains. It's not set long lat. How do you add the. I think it's just set HTML, even though it's not coming up there. Like that. I think so. We'll try it. Then we'll go. Oh, I know it's throwing a fit because there was I put a comma there. All right. I think that's. Yeah, there is a set HTML. Then we'll go. Add, we'll go. Add to. I think that's it. Hmm, maybe. Let's see if we got. Oh. Up. Set long. You guys yell at me when I do this stuff. Try that. No. It's no errors. Oh, you know what we forgot? We forgot and included. Uh, uh, map Libre CSS style. I, the hint is when I move my cursor over a polygon, you can see the scroll bar doing weird stuff. So it's trying to write that information somewhere, but it's a, it doesn't have the styles to put it where it's supposed to be. Let's go into, in your source folder, there is this app.postcss file. Just at the top, we'll go at import dot dot slash node modules slash map libre gl that was interesting looks like map libre gl actually also installs mapbox gl when you yeah that's weird map libre gl slash dist slash our css Let's see if it's happy now oh hey hi Hi. 
Perfect. And it's not going away because we haven't done anything to our, our mouse mouse leave event yet. Nice. So let's fix that. We'll go mouse leave geography layer. Do I do I name things the most obvious thing? I think I do. It's like the most obvious but least helpful way. Like geography. That's 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 clear. We'll just go pop up dot remove. So now when the mouse leaves, that pop up goes away. Good. Now we want it to say more than hi. We are going to give it a a message from our data, and we'll make this a JavaScript text literal template, whatever you call it. So we'll make an H3. H3 is my favorite thing after H1. Uh, let's uh, let's tailwind it. We'll go some big text. Uh, we'll make it bold, and we'll go text center. And then let's make this. We'll insert our variable. This would be e dot features and zero because it's you're only going to be over one feature dot properties dot uh, precinct. That's right. I think that's right. And we'll just change this to message. Hey! All right. Now let's get it to do the population right under here. Population. And that would be essentially this whole same thing again, only instead of precinct, it's going to be population. Hey! Happy day. So now we have our mouse, our basically our pop-up information, and you can just in a similar way string whatever data you're redistricting with here. Have it. it is kind of that is kind of annoying. See, see how the pop up is like right on the hand, so it's covering up what you're. Let's fix that. Offset 50. Did you catch that? Did I do that right? Uh, bu -bu I thought offset was the. I think it's, I think it's supposed to be a number. Five. Hmm. Uh, uh. Okay. Yeah, I thought it was offset. But you have to spell it right. Uh, you people. Jeez. Okay. Yeah, that, that puts it up a little above so you can see, see a little bit what you're doing there. All right, that's a little better. Sorry, that, that was not something you needed to watch me do, but, you know, these those little things just, just kill me. So now we have our all of our pop-up stuff. We need our click event. And so what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to... Uh, on click, we want to get the index of that GeoJSON feature. So then we can use that to set that value on the geography store. And then we'll use the, that data from the geography store to update the map data. So it's going to be a couple step process. We're going to go const ID, and we want the uh, uh, Geography dot uh, features and there's this cool function that I, I don't use enough. It's called find index. And that just returns the index of what you're about to search for. So it's it's a lot easier than like looping through all your stuff trying to find the match. It's a little bit easier than a map reduce 
as you know, you only want to get the index is all you're interested in. Find index, and for each feature, what we're looking for is feature dot properties dot uh, uh, precinct. That's the unique identifier. Is equal to e dot features first one dot properties dot precinct. That should get our ID. That's a lot of uh, interesting stuff there. Let's let's do a little reality check here. You know what? That's not really an ID. We should call that index. So now if we click, okay. I like that. Now it's not getting the voting precinct number it's getting the index of where that feature is so we can quickly write that so now we can go outside geography dot features and that index dot properties dot uh, district equals and then whatever our district control this is coming from our data store now whatever our district uh, selector control says is the current district and then we have to to forcibly make the map realize it has some new data so we'll map dot get source for our geography layer and then we'll want to set data and from that geog our geography store that we just updated so now, unless I did something heinous, like let's go to four and cross fingers. Yay! Yes! We are. Look, 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 look. Try to do that five. We are redistricting, folks. This is democracy in action. Or something. All right. Now we have a completely working map. It's got our hover information and it's got our click event. It's tied into our colors. It's tied into our, our store for our geography and our district. So everything is working together. And just marvel, if you will, how little code we've had to make for this. Our, our selector is this little thing. And our map is is like with everything style and setting up the everything else is, is like like a hundred lines of code and we are redistricting happy day let's just do a little sanity check here for my make sure it's actually writing this geography back to the data store yep we're getting we're getting consoles so yeah we are good we have a map next time let's we've got really two more things i want to do i want to run some checks i want to run a check on the population and we'll have a business rule like a 10 percent variance in population from the mean uh, that's actually what the statute is in north carolina and let's run a contiguity check because I, I i'm curious i think i can use turf for that and i think we can run it on the client Back when I first did this, it had to make a round trip to the server and let PostGIS handle it and just come back with a response, which is no bueno, because it means somebody could fulfill all the other criteria and everything looks good. They go to submit and it goes, nah, bro, that is that is not, not gonna work. So I think we can do that on client now. So we need those checks and I wanna make one chart. We'll make a chart for the population because when you're trying to balance the population, you want to see where all the districts are so you know what to add add to and subtract from to, to rate your balance. Then I think we've got it. I think we will preserve democracy for the next generation or, you know, whatever. Well, hope you enjoyed that. I will catch you later. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye.